So this tied me to him as well. You know, so you can imagine. I And I think that's, for me, what art can do. Um, it should be connecting with us. It should be connecting with our innermost thoughts. So this is just improvised out of scrap paper. Um, some of them done quite quickly. So this was in um, early, I might work on several at once, but this was early spring in the UK. So um, bluebells, and you can see I, I stretch that. So this is just, these have, you'll see how they have a close connection to some of my books my textile books. So this is just one little sketchbook and we may well improvise as well as I'm going to gift you, not something this scale, just a small handheld um, sketchbook, but um, this is a watercolor sketchbook and this is just recording. These are photographs stuck down um, as well as drawing. So they're part photograph, um, part drawing. And this celebrates my first teaching in place away from home, only locally. It was um, Westine in 222, so a year after Derek's stroke, and his brother came to look after him. So I could actually get back in the studio. And that's the first time I was, was in the studio with people. So again, for me, I wanted to share these because this is where I am about being excited about being away from home. I had always said that um, when I'm at home, I get the itchy feet. I am a traveller by nature, um, Romany ancestry, and I need to travel so that I remind myself of the familiar things I can see all over the world that ties us together as part of humanity. Um, but then sometimes when I'm traveling, especially when I'm away, it never happened in the USA because I never stayed longer than three or four weeks. But in Australia, where I had to make it work for longer time just to lessen my impact on the environment with flights, I might have been away for two months. And sort of the last two weeks, I was itching to be back home here, you know, just in my own space, which is normal. I think we all go through that. It won't help with soul stirring retreats. It'll pass too quickly. And at the same time, I'm absolutely sure we'll feel like we've been together forever as well. So these are just how I kind of bring things together. And I, I actually transcribe stitch and paper together. So there is some machine stitching even on these watercolour pages. Are there any questions at this stage? I'm sure you'll cover it later, Cass, but you're talking about materials. So that might be some of Jim's logistics. Will yeah, we I'll need to bring, about, will yeah, we need to bring anything? Yeah. I'll be talking about the minimum. I don't want I don't want you to do more than what I do. Um, and I think, Laurie, I think you always commented on that. How, how many suitcases do I bring when I'm traveling? Laurie? One. I, and then I, I will have samples. I'll have a few samples and I'll bring some materials, but I want you to be able to pack everything you need in one 20 kilo suitcase. We will have the opportunity to go to a V Grenier to buy materials to make three to work with, and maybe a small bag. This is part of your course, if you like. So that's something we'll cover at the next meeting. And perhaps I can show you some of my, um, what I call my mobile kits. I'll send a link that um, you can send out to everybody, how I put everything in a little straw bag, which those who have worked with me before rem probably remember that little, handbag, a little straw handbag that I had all my colours in because we want things to be portable and it's not so much as I need to have, it's about how can I work with what I have? What can we source? How can we improvise? You know, you won't need to bring plastic containers or jars or things, we'll find them. Forget yoghurt, you save the pots to work in. So it's about utilising what you have. So again, ask questions. So just to give you an example of simplicity, this is certainly achievable with what you, except for the machine stitch, you can machine stitch um, back home if you want, but something like this in progress is certainly achievable within that week. Um, this is an unfolding landscape, so it might be in paper, it might be cloth and paper, but none of these things, you know, there's only a few pieces of cloth here which we can source, you might want to save, as in this instance, this is a wrapper from a, uh, um, a, um, uh, a, 
an Italian sweet. This is a print from a custard cream biscuit. You know, so I've, I improvise scraps of cloth um, that I've collected while I'm in Japan. And this is a combination of looking at the woodland near where I live, which I had rem a reminder of what it was like to be in Japan four years ago, because it's a similar woodland. So again, working through those pieces. But everything here is found materials. And um, Jen reassures me that there's plenty of stuff that we'll find locally in the vide greniers and they're even being more considerate about what we've seen throwing away. But yes, you will have what I would call the basic minimum. And I think as long as you have at least a sketchbook of some description and some drawing media, you know, it, 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 it isn't going to be exacting. I don't work in that way. So we, we can talk about that. And your favorite yeah. colors and materials. I happen to use here um, inks on a solid palette called Kohenor. Again, I'll build up a kit. In fact, I can pull one of those out, but you know, it doesn't need. To be com complex. You know, so if you've got water soluble crayons, these happen to be intense neo color water soluble. If you've got those, that, that's enough. This is just a tiny little watercolor set which gives me these bright colors. Um, it's called um, Kohenor. But you don't need all of that. You could just get away with one set of water soluble because you can use them dry and you can use them wet but think about the tools you like to use as well so if you happen to enjoy felt pens or sharpies or whatever it is you feel familiar with bring what you want to bring not don't bring too many maybe bring some of your favorite bits of cloth that you think you could use or collate things but again let the, the area we're in also be your inspiration and your gathering of materials so that the two can come together. But my job will be to show you how you might be able to use your familiar materials in a different way. OK, so, you know, this is just a small stitch sample which has got no um, machine stitching. So, again, we might do some little test pieces by hand, sit, sitting companionably with a wine or in the evening, have a couple of glasses and you won't mind what it looks like. You'll just stitch. You know, you'll just experiment. So you're thinking in a much more open way. Um, you might want to do a small series of small pieces. Look on my website. You could turn some of these quite easily into three, 3D. I mean, I like the idea and I have done this is where you make you could make little vessels you know, all you have to do is turn a piece of cloth into a tube and you've got a narrow vessel. Um, I've made things looking at Derek's old um, pots, ceramic pots, and used them as moulds. We'll invent, we'll be inspired, we'll inform each other, we'll exchange ideas. We might swap materials. Um, we might even share our hearts a little bit. So 